Hey everybody, welcome back to part four of the gap trading series. This is the final video in this series. We're gonna take all of the Python code we've written so far and we're going to deploy it and put it on a server out there in the cloud. In this video, I'm going to be using Linode as the server provider and why is that? They are not a sponsor of the channel. I've actually been a personal customer of this service since, and this is my real Linode that I've been running with client websites. I've been developing web applications for many, many years now. You'll see this Linode that I'm running now has been running since 2009, so that's 13 years ago. That's how long I've been at this, and this machine's been running nonstop since then. It might have rebooted a few times since then, so I have a lot of trust in this particular uh, server provider, and it's very easy to use use. Even though they're not a sponsor, I'll leave a referral code below because when you sign up using a referral code, uh, you receive $100 a 60 day credit. So even if you don't like it, you can just cancel it. And thank you to everyone that signed up from my last deployment video where I used uh, Linode. It looks like I've already earned $625 in credits. And so I can take all the apps that we make on this channel and I can deploy them on Linode and show it to you in tutorials. And I don't have to pay for any hosting, uh, which is great. So how do we get started? How do we get this Python code up and running on our Linode server? There's multiple ways. We could technically FTP this up to our server, but we have this code already in a Git repository and it's up to date. So what I'm gonna do is clone this repository onto the Linode server. So the first thing I need to do is get a Linode uh, server up and running. So I have already signed up for Linode and I can click create. They give this nice dashboard here, which is really cool. And I click create Linode, I can choose to set set up a dedicated server, which is more expensive. That means I have my own server, my own box with dedicated RAM and CPUs, or I can set up a virtual server. So here I have a tab for a shared CPU, so I can create what's called a nanode, which is only $5 monthly. And so I'm gonna use that. We're just running a couple Python scripts. This is not very uh, intensive. So we can use a very cheap uh, virtual server with a shared CPU for this. But if someday you made this gigantic super application, you can easily upgrade this to larger and larger Linodes. And if someday you had this huge crazy algorithm or you develop the next fintech application that takes over the world, uh, you can scale this up to more and more RAM and have load balancing and all these types of things. But you don't want to over optimize at the beginning. People are always asking me, why don't you optimize it and run it in C++ and all this kind of stuff. When you're just getting started with something, you do it in the simplest way possible and you get something up and running. And that's why we're going to get this up and running in this video. And so we're going to start here and we're not overthinking it. So I got a nanode here and I'm running it. It's going to be $5 monthly. I have a these credits so it's free and if you sign up using a code you get hundred dollars in credits free so you can run this for a long time test it out and then once you have everything tested out and you want to scale up and you have the need to pay more then you can upgrade to dedicated and things like that and if you just buy everything out of the gate you'll end up with a hundred domain names you own I own all kinds of domain names uh, that I plan to build something and I never did so uh, start off very simple and only use what you need so I selected a nanode here. I need to choose a Linux distribution. Some people like to use Debian or CentOS. I'm just gonna use Ubuntu here. So I have Ubuntu and it looks like there's a 22.04 LTS. I didn't even know that was out. Did that just come out? Ubuntu 22, yeah, two days ago, look at that. So there's a new version, LTS version, which is the long-term version of Ubuntu that's maintained for many years. And so this just came out a couple days ago. So we're on the cutting edge here. We got the latest operating system, which is great. And then we're selecting a nanode and we're gonna give it a label. We can give it some kind of name. I'm just gonna call it Ubuntu by default. That sounds great. And then we can set up a root password. So I'm gonna choose a root password there. You can choose whatever you want. And if you wanna log in using an SSH key, you can generate one and add your SSH key here. I'm not gonna do that here, but that's generally a great practice over just logging in with a password. Also, if you're running critical code on here that's making money for you or clients are depending on it or customers are depending on it, you should have backups set up. I'm not going to enable backups on this one since this is just a tutorial, but on web applications that I have out there where people are paying me money for them, I have backups, absolutely. So I'm gonna create a Linode and it needs me to select a region as well. I'm on the West Coast. I'm just gonna put California. You can put Dallas, whatever. So I'm gonna create a Linode and what that's gonna do is create a machine and spin it up just like that. And it's booting up. And so you can see I have SSH access here. So I have an IP address and I can log in via the web as well. So that's gonna take a little bit to boot up. So after the provisioning step, looks like it was booting and now it says running. So let me try to launch this SSH console now to see what it's doing. 
and look at that there's some output so this looks just like a linux machine booting up so it's not done booting up yet but in a little bit we should get a command line and we can start running some commands and using this thing so I'm going to close this web console right now. I'm actually not going to use the web. I'm going to use an SSH client. So I'm going to use uh, OSX here that already has an SSH client uh, built in. So I'm going to open a terminal here. Now, if you're on Windows, you can use a PuTTY. And I think some versions of Windows might even have an SSH client built in now. So you can download PuTTY and enter the IP address there in your login, or you can use uh, some other SSH solution if you're running a different operating system. So I'm going to use the Mac terminal here, and I'm going to use the built in SSH client. And so I can just type SSH root at the IP address, just like that. And I'll type that in and I just say yes, and I'll be connected. And it prompts me for my root password. And just like that, I'm on this server. I'm going to reference the cheat sheet I left here in the readme of the repository. So as you can see here, it says apt get upgrade. So a great thing to do when you're starting up a new server is you want to upgrade the packages first. So I'm going to type apt get upgrade like that to upgrade all the packages and make sure everything is secure. Now, this version of Linux looks like it just dropped 48 hours ago. There's probably not that much to upgrade yet. And so look, upgrade uh, done already. So uh, on the last version of Linux, it actually ran a number of upgrades whenever uh, I ran this command, but this just came out when I started recording this video. The next thing I wanna do is I want to set a time zone. So if I type time there or date, you see it says UTC time. So right now I'm on the West Coast and it's Friday at 7.18 p.m. But this is showing Saturday UTC time and I don't naturally translate that in my brain very well. And so what I wanna do is list all the different time zones and I wanna choose one of these and you can choose one that corresponds to your time zone. And so since I'm on the West Coast, I'm using America, Los Angeles, just like that. And now when I type a date here, you'll see it says 7.18 p.m. Uh, Pacific Daylight Time, which is what I expect, and it's a Friday. That makes sense to me, and when I'm setting up the time for this script to execute, I want a time that I understand so that I don't make any mistakes. The next thing I need to do is get this code onto the Linode server, because right now, I'm on this file system and there's nothing there. And so what I wanna do is get this Python code on to the server and I can just use git to do that. So this is the uh, git command line and I can just clone this repository onto this server. Now Ubuntu now has git built in. In the past you had to install the git command line and if you're using another Linux operating system you might still have to install git, you might not have it. But I have it already now so I can just Type that, git clone, and now I've cloned that to the server. And now if I list the directory, you see I have a directory called gap trading, and I look inside of here, and I'm on the server, and you see, look at that, I have those Python scripts now, just like we wrote, and I can use VI or I can use nano. A nano is easier to use for most people, so I can do long small caps, and I can edit any of this code. And there you go, there's our Python code that we just wrote. And so I'm not gonna save any changes. So what do we need to do next? We need to set up our configuration file. So I've included a sample config file here with no API key, but you need to provide an API key. And so we need to do that. And so I called it sample config. And so I said a copy sample config.py to config.py, right? So I just gave a sample and I don't commit that to the repository. So what you actually need is a file called config.py. So we need to edit our config.py. You can use nano to do that. So you can type nano config.py. I'm going to use VI here. Some people are not familiar with those keyboard shortcuts and it's harder to use for them. So use whatever you're comfortable with. So I'm gonna do this and so I can type in an API key right here. So what I'll do here is go to my Alpaca account. You see I ran this strategy today and it looks like it finished up, which is pretty cool. And then so I'm going to go over to my API keys here and I'm gonna generate a brand new API key. And I'm gonna go ahead and reset my account balance as well with $100,000. And there you go, I have a fresh account with no position so I can test from scratch. I can go to my API keys on the side and I can generate a new API key. You can see it on the screen as many people have pointed out, but I'm gonna delete this right afterwards so it's not gonna be uh, very useful to you. So I'm gonna copy this, my API key and my secret key, uh, just like that, and I have that in there and they're in quotation marks. I still have my QQQ symbols, which is great. And then at the bottom here, you see I have the moving average days and my order dollar size. And there you go, I have a config file with my API keys and I'm ready to go. 
The next thing I'm gonna to need to do is install any dependencies. I installed these on my laptop, but these dependencies don't exist on this server yet. And so I have my gap trading directory. So I changed into my gap trading directory. So if I list that, if I go into my gap trading directory, uh, you can see the Python files inside. And if I try to type pip here, pip3, you'll notice it doesn't know what pip3 is. So the first thing I need to do is install pip on here. So I'm gonna do that, apt install uh, Python pip3 or apt get install Python pip3. And it doesn't know what that is. So, so let me see if these instructions have changed on Ubuntu to install uh, pip3. So I'm gonna click that and it says uh, how to install, da 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 apt sudo apt install so i'm going to apt install python 3 pip okay so they reversed the words there all of a sudden so uh, python pip 3 so i'm going to edit uh, my instructions here real quick so i'm going to do an edit there and i'm going to say uh, apt install python 3 pip so it's a little bit different there you go up to date so now if I type pip3, it knows what that command is. And so I can do pip3 install dash r requirements text. And that'll install any of the packages I have in that requirements text file. And there you go, looks like it finished. And so if you look in the requirements text file, so if I look in there, you'll see it installed Alpaca Trade API and Pandas. So not many requirements for this. So there you go, we got a server up and running on Linode. We've set the time zone, we've cloned the repository. We got those Python scripts on the server. We've edited our config file, we've installed pip and we've installed the requirements so we should be able to run those scripts that we wrote already so let's see if that works so I'm in the gap trading directory so you should see all your different files here so I'll run Python 3 short big tech and it's all right we're in a paper trading account so this is risk-free to do so I'm gonna run that and it says of course the market is not open it's Friday night right now so let me go ahead and edit that just to test this real quick so once again, I'm going to comment out this line right here so that we can let that run. But it's good that that's there. That makes sure if I set up cron incorrectly or if this runs on a Good Friday or a weekend that this isn't going to run and cause any problems. So that's good. So I'm going to run a short big tech again. Run that. And look at that, we got some shorts that are successfully uh, submitted. So we have some timestamps here. You see that it would have shorted Intuitive Surgical, uh, Illumina, Okta, Ross, and uh, T-Mobile. And we have some order IDs. And you see, I still have that error here on the stop price. I'm gonna get rid of that actually. So I'm gonna open up my uh, short big tech here. So I'm gonna actually edit this out. I'm gonna get rid of these bracket order symbols cause that's not really a uh, part of the strategy. So I'm just gonna say uh, market order symbols equals, and I'm just gonna get all of the symbols that down gap below uh, that moving average. So I'm gonna do down gaps below MA. And I'm just gonna get the symbol list just like that because bracket orders weren't really part of the strategy. I was just showing that as an example. So I'm going to comment out this code. I'm just gonna exit this for now. And then I'll comment out this stuff in case you wanna use it. And then I'm gonna push this to the repository. All right, so let me try that now. And I'll go back to my Alpaca account. You see my buying power went down and you see a bunch of orders were just uh, submitted. The market's closed and it's 7.28 p.m. over here. So these aren't gonna get filled. So these should be open orders right now. And I'm gonna cancel all those open orders. And so one way I can easily do that, I already have this liquidate script right here. And so let's make sure we can programmatically cancel all of our orders. So I'm gonna do that. So I'm gonna run python3 liquidate.py. And of course the market is not open. So I'm going to comment that out. Let's test our liquidate script. So Python three uh, liquidate.py. There you go, liquidated positions. And let's see if it cancels our open orders. Indeed it did. So our open orders disappeared. So we know our liquidation script is working correctly. I'm gonna try this one more time and submit all market orders. So I'm gonna do Python three uh, short big tech just like that and submit all my market orders. And there you go, all of my orders are successful. So that's looking pretty good. And then I can liquidate all those orders once again. And there you go, I just canceled all of those orders programmatically. Likewise, I'll go into this uh, long small caps file here and I'll go ahead and comment out this line and I'll put it back after we're done. And so we should be good there. So I can run a long small caps and I should submit a bunch of orders now just to make sure that works. And there you go, it's submitting tons and tons of limit buy orders and so many stocks gap down. You see that we ran out of buying power. You see there's a lot of open orders in here now. So I'm gonna go back and go ahead and liquidate all those once again. 
Now that we know our scripts are working properly, we just need to have them run according to our schedule. And so to do that, we're going to use cron. So I'm gonna run cron tab dash E, and that will let us edit our cron tab file. And I'm gonna use, I'm gonna pick an editor for this. So I'm gonna pick number one, which is nano. And so I'll go into the nano text editor, and then I can edit my cron tab file. And so in this cron file, I can specify some configuration to run some scripts on a schedule. And so right here, you see they provide an example. They said, for instance, you might wanna run a backup of all your user accounts at 5 a.m. every week with this command, right? And so we need to understand this syntax. And for this, I often use this site, uh, crontab guru. And so this is a visual editor for the syntax that translates that into plain English. And so if I wanted a script to run every day at 4.05, I would use this. This is the minute position and this is the hour position, right? And these asterisks here, these stars, uh, specify just run these every day of the month for every month and for any day of the week. And so we don't want it to run any day of the week. And so we can put 1-5 here and say run something on every day of the week from Monday through Friday, for example. And if you can recall, our strategy specified uh, we should short these stocks 10 minutes after the market opens. And so since I'm on the West Coast, the market opens at 6.30. And so I'm gonna run this at 6.40. So I'm gonna say the 40th minute at the sixth hour. And I've specified a, a time zone on my server to Pacific time. You'll need to translate this to whatever time zone you're in, or you can use UTC time. So now I have the syntax here to run a script every day of the week from Monday through Friday at 640. And that's exactly what I need. So, so I can go to my cron tab file here and just paste that in and say, I want to run a certain command. So I'm gonna run Python three and I'm in the uh, root directory and I'm in the gap trading directory. And then I need to run a uh, short uh, big tech dot pi. And technically another part of a server setup is you should create a uh, user accounts and you shouldn't be logging in with your root account and storing things in your root folder. But that doesn't really bother me here. We're just testing this out. We're spinning up a free server and we're testing out this code. If we went further with this in the future, we would create user accounts. We'd probably create a special directory uh, for these files and so forth. So uh, this is fine for now. So I'm going to click save and good. And now that I think about it, I wanna make sure this cron tab is functioning properly. So what I wanna do is do cron tab dash E and scroll down again to my uh, configuration. So you see it runs at 640. Right now it's actually 740 PM. So I wanna make sure the scheduling actually works and that I can actually successfully uh, run this command. And so I'm gonna use a time like two minutes from now to make sure this is working. And so since it's uh, 740 PM, that would be uh, in military time, that would be 19. So I'm gonna do uh, 1940, uh, I'll do 1941. So that's 741 p.m. for me. Um, and today is Friday, so this will run. And I'm gonna run that short uh, big tech. All right, so I'm gonna do that. Uh, the other thing I need to do that's in my configuration here is I need to log that to a file. So to do that, you can use these arrows here to direct the output of this script. So anything I print in the script will be directed into this trade.log file. And so I'm gonna do that as well. So I'm gonna uh, edit this. So I'm gonna do a cron tab dash E again. And then I'm going to go to the bottom and hopefully I get this in here in time. So I'm gonna go to the very end here and one thing about Nano is I don't know if it, maybe it has shortcuts, but I don't know them. I know them in VI, and so I'm gonna do that. So I'm gonna output that to a file, and it's gonna run in the next 30 seconds or so. So it's 7.40 p.m. right now, 7.40.37. So I'm gonna type date. So you see it's 15 seconds until it runs. I'm gonna go up one directory and make sure there's a trade log in a moment. So at 7.41 p.m. when this runs, I should see a trade log file if it worked correctly. So I'm gonna type date date, date, okay, and then now let me uh, list these files. Look at that, I have a trade.log, and if I look at that trade.log, let me uh, open this up, so I'm gonna do trade.log, and look at that, our code is running on a schedule and submitting uh, market orders just like that, and if I look in my Alpaca account here, I should see some open orders, there you go. It executed all these different orders uh, for the stocks that met our criteria. So now let's go ahead and go back in our cron tab and configure the other two scripts and then we'll be done. So I have the short big tech, so I want to add this uh, long small caps line, so I'll do that, right? 
And, and then at the end of the day, I wanna run a liquidate. So this is five minutes before the market closes where I'm at. So the market closes at 1 p.m. where I'm at. So I'm gonna run this at 12.55. I'm gonna run the liquidate.py script and log the output. This one is running at 6.40, so that's 10 minutes after the market opens. So I'm gonna change this to 19 to make sure we run a full simulation of how this would run end to end. So I'm gonna do a 7.45 since it's 7.43 right now. So I'm gonna let both of these scripts run, the long small caps and the short uh, big tech, and then I'll wait one more minute. So at uh, 7.46, I'll run the liquidate. So I'll have these all run in a row. I'll save that just like that. And I'm going to go ahead and delete my trade log, make sure it's written again. And I'm gonna go ahead and cancel all these orders real quick and start fresh. All right, so I'm going to my paper overview and I have $200,000 in buying power and it's 743 right now, 744. And so very soon here, we'll see our code execute and run end to end. And we should see some orders appear right here in our Alpaca account. And those orders are gonna be executed from this Linode server and they'll run every single day and it'll run and long small caps and it will short the big tech stocks and then it will liquidate at the end of the day. Look at that, our orders just appeared right there. If I list right here, I can look at my trade log and you can also see the orders just came in for all of the different uh, small cap stocks. And so I can look at my trade log here and here at the top, you can see that the big tech stocks finished first. And then after that, it submitted a bunch of limit orders for uh, the small cap stocks. And so there's tons and tons of orders here. And I suspect this eventually uh, ran out of money. And so there's additional checks to run on this. Maybe we should reduce our position size since I specified $5,000 orders and a lot of stocks gap down today and we only had $100,000. So maybe we should either limit it to 20 positions or we should reduce that order size in our account or make our criteria a little bit more specific so it doesn't match so many stocks. I think I only did a 1% gap down here, which is gonna match a lot of stocks on a big down day like today. So you see at the end here how we eventually got insufficient buying power. So we'll need to write some code to work around that. I think that's easy enough to handle. So I'm not gonna go through that in this video since this is focused on deployment. So you can just fiddle with the numbers in the config file and you'll be all good. So when I refresh, you see there's no open orders in here now because my liquidate script has now run successfully. So we've successfully canceled all of our orders. If we had any positions open right now and the market was open, it would have closed all of the orders as well and logged them all to the log file. And that's it, that's all we had to do. All of this information is available inside of the GitHub repository. So please try out the code, play around with Linode, try out the configuration, see if you can set up a Linux server and this can run your strategy day after day and whatever thing you can come up with. If it's just a simple thing that needs to run on a schedule, very easy to set up something like this. It's as simple as a couple of cron jobs and running some scripts on a schedule. And maybe you want really fancy stuff and a really, really complicated infrastructure, but if you're just running something simple like this, you don't really need that much to make it happen. And you can run it free for a number of months, which is great. So. That's it, I hope you liked this uh, series on gap trading, I hope you learned something. We covered a lot of ground here. We started with some questions from someone on Twitter who asked how to find gappers. We did that, we found stocks that gapped up and gapped down inside of a Google Colab notebook. We used MPL Finance to graph and chart some of this and visualize the data that we explored a bit. Then we used the Alpaca News API to retrieve some historical news. And also we did real-time streaming news over WebSockets. We tried out Hugging Face to do some sentiment analysis on the news. Then we went over the Quant Rocket article and went over the strategy, its rationale, and the backtest. We translated that to Python code and coded it up to execute trades against our Alpaca account. And now we've deployed that to a Linode server so that we can run it day after day in the cloud. So awesome. Thanks a lot for watching. Stay tuned for the next video. Thanks.